Dear friend, have you ever pondered the impact your words can have on your spiritual journey and the lives of those around you? Hello and welcome to A Daily Purpose and Our Given Purpose podcast. I'm Tori Slaughter, your host and Bible study teacher. Join me as we take a closer look at Psalms 141 and use the wisdom within its verses to explore the depths of our souls. Turn with me to Psalms 141. Psalms 141 in its entirety says, Lord, I cry out to you. Make haste to me. Give ear to my voice when I cry out to you. Let my prayers be set before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not incline my heart to any evil thing, to practice wicked works with men who work iniquity. And do not let me eat of their delicacies. Let the righteous strike me. It shall be a kindness. And let him rebuke me. It shall be as excellent oil. Let my head not refuse it. For still my prayer is against the deeds of the wicked. Their judges are overthrown by the sides of the cliff, and they hear my words, for they are sweet. Our bones are scattered at the mouth of the grave, as when one plows and breaks up the earth. But my eyes are upon you, O God the Lord. In you I take refuge. Do not leave my soul destitute. Keep me from the snares they have laid for me and from the traps of the workers of iniquity. Let the wicked fall into their own nets while I escape safely. Lord, we thank you for the reading of your words. Psalms 141. Welcome to Bible Study, a fragrant offering, finding wisdom and devotion in Psalms 141. Brothers and sisters, today (laughs) we are embarking on an exploration and this masterpiece, it does call us to a sacred space for a prayer for God's guidance and to surrender our hearts and devotion Now, as we navigate the verses penned by the psalmist, we will unveil the treasures hidden within the psalms and discover how its timeless truths can resonate in the depths of our own spiritual journeys. Let's start with verse 1. O Lord, I call upon you. Hasten to me. Give ear to my voice when I call you. So in these opening words, the psalmist sets the tone for an earnest plea, an urgent cry for the divine to incline his ear to the voice of the petitioner. It's a beautiful reminder that our prayers, no matter how feeble or fervent, are heard by a God who delights in our communion. In verse 3, we're asking God to set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Now here the psalmist acknowledges the potential harm that can stem from unguarded words. Hmm. In a world often dominated by hasty speech, this prayer becomes a, a poignant request to or for divine guidance in taming the tongue. It is a reminder that wisdom begins with thoughtful words. Now we can choose correction over comfort and verse five points to this. It says, let a righteous man strike me. It is a kindness. Let him rebuke me. It is oil for my head. Let my head not refuse it. So this willingness to accept correction, even if it comes in the form of a rebuke, is a mark of spiritual maturity. The imagery of oil for the head underscores the transformative power of correction, a soothing and healing balm for the soul. In verse 2, it may feel like we're going out of order, but just stay with me. Verse 2 of Psalms 141 says, Let my prayer be counted as incense before you, and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. 
Now, the psalmist employs very vivid imagery, likening prayers to incense, a fragrant offering that rises to the heavens. So this metaphor encapsulates the beauty and significance of sincere, heartfelt prayers as a pleasing aroma in the presence of the Almighty. Now we can trust in divine guidance and and verse 8 tells us, but my eyes are toward you, O God, my Lord, in you I seek refuge. Leave me not defenseless. So the psalmist concludes with a declaration of trust. He's fixing his gaze upon the divine. This is a reminder for us, brothers and sisters, that seeking refuge in God, we can find both strength and defense against the trials of our lives. Amen? Amen. I pray that this psalm becomes a guide point in your conversations with God, a testament to the transformative power of a heart surrendered in prayer. Before we continue, let's pause for this brief announcement. Hey there, friends. We've heard from countless listeners who've shared how a daily purpose has become an essential part of their daily routine, transforming their mornings into moments of empowerment. And we want to hear your stories. If you've experienced value and purpose through our daily content, we invite you to share your testimonials with us, whether it's with your family, at your church, in your business, or for personal growth, we want to know how a daily purpose is making an impact in your life. Your stories are powerful and we'd love to feature them on air. Please visit OurGivenPurpose.com and leave a testimonial about how you engage with our podcast every day. And don't just keep this to yourself. Let the whole world know how a daily purpose, the podcast, is impacting your life. Share your story, inspire others, and be part of a purpose-driven community. Now, let's turn our attention back to A Daily Purpose, an Our Given Purpose podcast. Day 356, Guarding the Gateway, Wisdom from the Psalms. All right, as we are continuing in the sacred scriptures, we have certain verses that resonate as a guide for the journey of faith. And as we just looked at Psalms 141, we're going to continue and sit in for a few moments, verses three and four, a prayer for a tongue taming. The verses read once again, Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not let my heart incline to any evil, to busy myself with wicked deeds in company with men who work iniquity, and let me not eat of their delicacies. That was the English Standard Version. So the psalmist, he starts with this heartfelt plea, a prayer for divine intervention in the realm of speech. It's an acknowledgement of the power of words and the need for God's guidance in keeping the door of our lips. The request extends beyond speech to the inclinations of the heart and a desire for righteous company. I want to turn your attention to several other scriptures that tell us about guarding our hearts, keeping our minds focused on God and and also remembering that we are made in God's image. Proverbs 4.23, guarding the heart, it says, keep your heart with all vigilance for from it flow the springs of life. So this wisdom mirrors the sentiments of Psalms 141, emphasizing the crucial role of the heart, shaping our words and actions Guarding the heart becomes a foundational practice, recognizing that our speech flows from the wells from our innermost being. Matthew chapter 15, verses 18 and 19, our words reflect the heart. The scripture says, but what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this defiles a person. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, 
murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. Jesus, in his teachings, echoes the interconnectedness of the heart and words. The words we speak are a reflection of the condition of our hearts. This reinforces the significance of maintaining a vigilant heart, for it inevitably shapes our speech and our actions. Looking at Ephesians 4.29, the scripture says, Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. The Apostle Paul's exhortation to the Ephesians underscores the transformative power of our words. It encourages us to speak in ways that uplift and bring grace to others. A practical application of guarding our mouths and ensuring our speech aligns with the edifying principles of love and grace. What is our daily takeaway? I would like to point out three things. Number one, daily examination of words and our hearts. Brothers and sisters, make it a habit to reflect on your words and thoughts daily. Ask yourself, are my words building up or tearing down? Is my heart inclined toward righteousness? Now we can choose righteousness and be righteous in companionship so we can be intentional about the company we keep. Surround ourselves with those who encourage and challenge you in the journey of faith. We can also incorporate mindful silence in moments of anger. When we are faced with anger or frustration, practice a moment of silence before responding. This pause allows for self-reflection and prevents hasty and potentially hurtful words. And finally, we need to speak words of encouragement, and that's what I would like to leave you with. We can be purposeful in incorporating words of encouragement and affirmation into our lives, into our daily interactions, and we could also seek opportunities to uplift and inspire those around us. We can find kindness and kind words to say to one another, even for people that we we don't like, who are still walking in their sins, who have not seen the fullness of Christ just yet. And maybe, just maybe, the things that you start to say about them helps them to know that God is real, that He is alive, and He is working through you. Oh, Hallelujah. Day 356, Guarding the Gateway, Wisdom from Psalms 141. I pray that you will continue to study these scriptures. If you are someone who has trouble with maybe blurting out things before you think about it, or even on social media, is your social media page angry? Are you always lashing out at others? How much encouragement and uplifting and and inspiration are you putting into the virtual space? Because the word tells us that our hearts are reflected. It's a reflection of our words and our thoughts. So, so the heart is, we will become. People will see us as the words we say. And if we are constantly encouraging and inspiring and motivating, they will see us as that. But there's the other side. They may even regard us as prideful, egotistical, angry, arrogant. So we have to be careful with our choice of words and how we are communicating, which is, again, why a daily purpose Bible study and devotional offers you the perfect chance to initiate a conversation about God's word. We are deeply grateful to you for sharing this podcast with your friends and family. We'd like to thank our many sponsors and our Patreons whose donations help us to provide this valuable content. If you feel led to contribute financially and become part of the Our Given Purpose ministry, please visit OurGivenPurpose.com. Your contribution will help us spread God's message and connect with people all over the world. Remember, 
You have seeds to sprinkle and don't lose sight of the ones falling on you. Where will they grow? By the road and shallow soil and the thickets? Or will they find a home in good soil to flourish and produce a good work? What God has begun in you, he will complete. Have faith and be bold. You've just heard a Daily Purpose, an hour-given purpose podcast.